Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm excited. I think this is going to be a fun video. I thought I would do my top 10 favorite shows to binge watch on Netflix. And I'm going to throw in one bonus from Hulu because I have to include it. So I've already filmed this video and when I filmed it the first time, I was trying to describe each show. And I've watched these videos of other people describing the shows. I'm always scared that they're going to give something away or do a spoiler of some sort and when I was describing these shows I was so scared that I was gonna do a spoiler somehow in my description so I wanted to refilm it I'm gonna read Netflix's description of each of these shows that way it gives you a little you know explanation of the show without giving any spoilers because I would feel terrible if I spoiled anything about these shows so I'm just going to jump right in and let you know some of my favorite shows to binge watch that are currently, hopefully, available on Netflix. So these are in no particular order, but the first one is Rain, and that's, and I'm going to put the spelling of each of these shows down below, but it's R-E-I-G-N. This show, according to Netflix, this vivid historical drama series tells of the rise to power of Mary's Queen of Scots and a court full of sexual and political and political intrigue. So, it's a drama. Um, I don't know. It's about Mary Queen of Scots. I don't want to describe it too much. It's just there's a lot of drama involved, um, different relationships, you know, love, things like that. So, it's, it's a great show. I've heard several other people like the show. I'm obsessed with Scotland and Outlander and anything like at all all similar to that so when I saw Mary Queen of Scots I was like oh yeah so I thought that was just like a just a me thing that I was into but I've heard a lot of people talk about really liking this show so I think you should really check it out I think there's four seasons they're all available on Netflix as of today I believe so it's really good I think you'd like it my second recommendation is Mad Men it says this is set in the 1960s in New York City. This award-winning series takes a peek inside an ad agency during an era when the cutthroat business has a glamorous lure. So I'm realizing that these descriptions don't do much to, to tell you about the show. Um, but there again, I just don't want to give any spoilers. But it follows the main character, Don Draper, and he's over, he works at an ad agency, and it takes you through his relationships and you know with different people and it is like it said it was set in the 1960s I think it ends in the 70s um, but it's so true to the time to the decade that they do their clothing is amazing their style overall the set style everything is so true to that decade and it's so fun to watch that the characters are so interesting and I this is one of my top favorite shows of all time. Um, this is such a good show. So number three is Call the Midwife. It says this period drama set in impoverished East, impoverished East London in the 1950s follows a newly qualified mid midwife and her colleagues at a nursing convent. So there again it kind of goes in their relationships and it shows you how they you know um, just the different characters relationships and it's so heartwarming I love this show and being a nurse um, especially having done home health in the past and in this show they go into people's homes and they take care of them and it's not all it's mostly about midwifery and going to help people deliver babies but it's not all about being a midwife um, there are some there are some also just nursing aspects of it and it's just, it touches my heart, I guess, because I'm a nurse, but it just reminds me so much of my home health patients, and there are just some people that you get so attached to, and it was really similar in that show, and it was just so true to how real life nursing is, and just, I love the show. All I can say is it's just heartwarming, and I love, love the show. I love the characters. Both my mom and my sister have loved this show, too. It's just, it's so good. Number four is The Crown. And this is a pretty popular one. It's a Netflix original, I believe. Yes, so this is a Netflix original. It says, this drama follows the political rivalries and romance of Queen Elizabeth II, II's reign and the events that shaped the second half of the 20th century. I believe they're working on the third season now. Um, there's two seasons out right now, and they're both 
looked so great. I love the actors that play these characters. I love, um, while I'm sure it's not exactly, of course, perfect to real life, um, it's just fun to see inside the royal family and things like that. So I love this show. I think they have done a great job with this. So number five is another Netflix original. It's Grace and Frankie. This show took me a long time. I would pass by it on Netflix when I was trying to find a new show to binge watch, and I was like, eh, I don't know. Um, I put this show on the list because it's great, but it is hilarious. It had me laughing out loud so many times, and my sister agrees. She loves this show. It just makes you laugh so much. It is so funny. It says, they're not friends, but when their husbands leave them for each other, proper Grace and eccentric Frankie begin to bond in this Emmy-nominated series. So another thing that makes me laugh is that Grace reminds me so much of myself, and of course, not identically for either one of these comparisons, but Grace just reminds me so much of myself. <laughs> And Frankie reminds me so much of my sister. And um, there again, just in little personality traits. So it, that kind of made me laugh even more watching the show. Um, but it's just a really lighthearted, it's just a funny show. I think you guys would really enjoy it. Okay, number six on my list is Parenthood. And this is right up there with Mad Men. This is one of those shows that when I was binge watching it, you know how sometimes when you're reading a book or you're binge watching a show, it just like consumes you. And when it's over, it's so depressing. And this was one of those shows for me. It is so heartwarming there again. Um, it says, four grown siblings juggle parenthood, relationships, careers, and more as they cope with life's up and downs in this drama set in Berkeley, California. This show had me laughing and just crying and it is such a good show. Um, it came out in 2014, so this is one that's been out for a while, but if you've been on the fence about watching this like I was, I never watched it when it was actually live on TV. Um, I started it really late, and there again, my sister watched this one too. She may have even, I think my sister got me started on this show actually. Maybe I got her started. Anyways, um, I can't remember, but oh, this is such a good show. It is just one of those that like just sucked me in, and I couldn't stop binge watching this show. Um, so good. Number seven on my list is the reason I'm wearing this shirt. I thought this was a fitting for this video. It's Stranger Things, and which of course is another Netflix original show. I'm sure y'all don't need me to tell you how great this one is. Um, it says, when a young boy vanishes, a small town uncovers a mystery involving secret experiments, terrifying supernatural forces, and one strange little girl. So I knew my husband would love this show. Um, this is one of those shows that if it was like four in the morning and I had to be up at five in the morning, I'd be like, just one more episode. Like, ugh, you just can't stop watching it. Um, I think it's set in the 80s, which is fun. There again, I guess I, I, guess I love decade shows because it's fun. Um, I love how they do such a great job of setting it in the 80s. Um, but I finally convinced my husband to start watching this show and he binged it like crazy, which he's just not a huge binge watcher of shows. There's a select few, but very rare. And this is one that he did end up loving, which I knew he would, but it's such a good one. And it's perfect because Halloween is coming up. So if you haven't started watching it, it's a perfect time of the year to start watching it. I used to be huge into scary movies. I'm not so much anymore. Um, but if you are avoiding this show because you think it's scary, it's a little bit creepy, you know, um, but once you get past the first few episodes, it's really not scary, I wouldn't say. So if you're avoiding this because you think it's going to scare you and you're not going to be able to sleep all night, I really don't think it'd keep you awake all night. Um, but you're the judge of that because my sister is that way. She does not like anything scary and she loves this show. So number eight is The Tudors. Um, this has been, I watched this show years ago. Um, but it is one that I really, really enjoyed. It says, all the splendor and scandal of England's 16th century royal court comes to life in this series that follows notorious Tudor monarch Henry VIII. So it just takes you through all of his wives and the drama within that and everything. Um, but it's really good. And it's just, um, just the romance involved and things like that. I really enjoyed this show, even though, like I said, it's been years since I've watched it, but I do remember loving this show. 
Number nine is Breaking Bad. There again, this has got to be in my top three favorite shows of all time. That's so hard to say. I mean, Golden Girls isn't on my list, but that's probably my number one. But anyways, it's hard to pick shows. But this is pr this is in my top three, three of Breaking Bad. It says, a high school chemistry teacher dying of cancer teams with a former student to secure his family's future by manufacturing and selling crystal meth. It can be dark, but it's so dramatic. It is just like keeps you on the edge of your seat. It the writers of the show did an incredible job of just they ended it right at the perfect note you know you never want your good shows to end but they have to end on a high note or they don't end on a high note like using the example of dexter for example because that was the greatest show ever and then it just it didn't end when it should have but anyway breaking bad did and um, it ended on a high note. It is such a good show. So, like I said, it can be violent. It can be dark. But it's... I loved it. And number 10 is Sons of Anarchy. Um, it says, After seizing control of its town, gun-running motorcycle clubs, the Sons of Anarchy soon butts heads with rival bikers, racist groups, and the law. You know, it's about a motorcycle group. And... I mean, Charlie Hunnam is the main character, so you really can't go wrong there. Um, it's just a lot of drama in between this motorcycle group and, um, or this motorcycle club and, you know, the um, violence, drugs, guns, stuff like that. Um, but there's a lot more to it, and it's such, I, I loved this show. Um, it's been a couple of years since I've watched it, but this is one that I love to binge, and I love the character dynamics. There's so much drama, so um, yeah, this is definitely a recommendation. Okay, so my last recommendation is kind of a bonus because it's from Hulu, it's not from Netflix, but I had to include this show because this show is amazing. It's The Handmaid's Tale, and it is a Hulu original. The only complaint I have about Hulu original shows is that when they come out, when a new season starts, it's one episode a week, which, Netflix has just spoiled us, and when they come out with a Hulu, or with a Netflix original, you get the whole season, so you can binge watch it in a couple days. And with Hulu, you have to be patient, and I'm just not patient. <laughs> now it drags it out longer, so that's nice. But with Hulu, you just get on one episode a week, unless it's been on the, you know, unless it's already been out for a while, and then you get the whole season. But as it's a new season, you just get one episode a week. So that's my only complaint, which is a petty complaint. But um, anyway, this says. Adapted from the classic novel by Margaret Atwood, The Handmaid's Tale is the story of life in the dystopia of Gilead, a, total, a totalitarian society in what was formerly the United States. Facing environmental disasters and a plunging birth rate, Gilead is ruled by a twisted fundamentalism in its militarized... I'm using my reading skills on this description return to traditional values. As one of the few remaining fertile women, Alfred is a handmaid in the commander's household. One of the cast of women forced into sexual servitude as a last desperate attempt to repopulate the world. In this terrifying society, Alfred must navigate between commanders, their cruel wives, domestic Marthas, and her fellow handmaids. Where anyone could be a spy for Gilead, all with one goal, to survive and find the daughter that was taken from her. That was a great description. Netflix needs to step up their uh, descriptions. <laughs> um, anyway, that was a great description. I don't want to go into too many more details about that show because I know I'll spoil it. Um, I will say this show can be hard to watch. Um, it's kind of scary. It's like, it's when you when you're watching the walking dead if you've watched the walking dead it makes you think well what would i do in that case of an apocalypse full of zombies um and you start looking at things totally different when you're binge watching that kind of a show um but when you're watching the handmaid's tale it's like oh my gosh what if that really happened in real life and it really makes you think and um it's terrible so that it's definitely dark at times um but it's really good this is one that i can't talk my sister into watching because she thinks it's just going to be too dark and disturbing. And it's really not disturbing. I mean, maybe. Um, but I don't think it is. It's just a, it's a really good story. 
So I recommend that one. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this list. This was so fun. This was a fun video to make and a fun video to think of and to come up with this list. I'm sure I could do three or four more top 10 lists. Um, and as I'm binging other shows, I'll throw some in there. I'll do another one maybe later on or maybe next year. But you guys let me know in the comments down below what your favorite shows are to binge watch because I am always looking for new shows to binge. I'm working on, this is kind of embarrassing. I don't think, I don't know. It's not that embarrassing, but I'm working on Gossip Girl right now and I'm enjoying this show a lot more than I thought I would. <laughs> I'm only like three episodes in, but, but you guys please, because I'm having a hard time finding some other good shows, please let me know your recommendations down in the comments and I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll subscribe so you can continue watching my videos and I hope you all have a great rest of the day. Bye.